Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm happy you observed that I did more, that more than putting on my lights off. I stood because I wanted you to have visibility that I was prepared to speak. Um, I recognize that Madam Clark was obscuring my vision. And, uh, hopefully we can... <laughs> Thank you very much and good morning, colleagues. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the motion that this Honorable House of Assembly do adopt the report of the Standing Finance Committee on the estimates of revenue and expenditure of the financial year 2024-2025 in the sum of $1,894,000,000 hundred dollars. Mr. Speaker, allow me just before my brief contribution to call out my dear cousin, and I refer to her as Auntie Rosella George of Tiroche, who is not doing too well. But in prayer, I am wishing her well, and I ask her sons, her three sons, to take courage as a family as we, we tarry, as we go through life dealing with the ups and downs and challenges of this life. Mr. Speaker, also, I wish to convey my sincere condolences to the family and friends of Wavin Poisson on the passing of Brother Morris, who was known by many for his charity works in the community. I ask them to take courage, and of course, God will see us through. Mr. Speaker, I cannot help but also recognize want to recognize the presence of our, the parliamentary representative who was here yesterday, the Honorable Dr. Poyot. And of course, I was extremely pleased to please have seen her. Please refer to her by her constituency. By the member for Babono, sorry, Mr. Speaker, the member for Babono. Her presence here was, and certainly had some thrills and I was extremely pleased and happy to, to, to see her in our midst. Um, Mr. Speaker, many of us from time to time go through what life has to offer, but we are comfortable and we are comforted in the fact that we know our own Redeemer lives Amen. and that he will see us through life, even in our difficult times. Mr. Speaker, I wish to place on record this morning, my profound admi admiration for our esteemed leader and Prime Minister, the Honorable Philip Joseph, Joseph Pierre. Sometimes, Mr. Speaker, I ask, what will he think next? What more will he give to St. Lucians? <coughs> he never ceases to amaze me with his creativ creativity in putting people first. And of course, I know he's, he's helped and he's he received support from my able friend from ancillary canneries. Uh, and uh, I cannot help that to reflect on the member from ancillary canneries because I know he is helping our leader, our prime minister, and he's in the Ministry of Finance, assisting in putting together this really timely and an important estimates of expenditure and revenue. Mr. Speaker, I listened intently as the Prime Minister introduced the budget. And coupled with my initial review of the estimates of revenue and expenditure, I can only describe this budget as a CPR budget. CPR budget. Yes, the member for Strozel Sultimus, a CPR budget. I call it a CPR budget because it is a caring, a caring, productive, and a responsible budget that proposes to resuscitate life in terms of economic and social well-being of, of our St. Lucians into this country. A budget that will inject the needed resources into the country through caring, productive, and responsible programs and initiatives in a manner that demonstrates that the government is a caring, a productive, and a responsible one. 
a CPR budget. Mr. Speaker, I rise to, to speak first to avoid the noise of who should speak first or last. Because in the good old book it says the first shall become the last and the last shall become the first. I am not here to respond but to project what is correct and true. Because in the presentation of the Prime Minister yesterday, what was glaring in his presentation is his truthfulness, his sincerity. And it doesn't matter what the other side says or do or contrive to come up with. Truth can defend itself. And therefore, when you are about to speak truth, you can speak first. When you are about to speak truth, you can speak last. When you are prepared to speak truth, you can speak anytime. So I know the member from Mikud South, as it is. He's not present here, and um, he's either not present on a phone brick, or he's either running out away from the member from Central Castries, or he's either, for some reason or the other, member from Central Castries. He's usually out, but most times running away from the presence of the member from Central Castries. I know this. Being provocative, yeah. But Mr. Speaker, the budgeted estimates of expenditure for the Ministry of Equity is important in that regard. Social justice and empowered expenditure for 2024-2025 stand at 58 million, 958,500 dollars. Mr. Speaker, there is a decrease from last year. A decrease from last year. Approximately $17 million decrease. Mr. Speaker, but, you know, I went through the estimates of expenditure and um, I re remembered that in the, in the Bible there was a story of Lazarus and there is a, 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 an artist who coined a song about this, in the, a, a gospel song about the story of Lazarus and said that even if he was four days late, he was still on time. The prime minister somehow can reduce a ministry and still give you more. And I will explain this. I will explain this. The member for Sozel is smiling. I can show you. It's amazing. Oh, how can the Prime Minister reduce the amount in equity by 17 million and still give more? I will take some time to share with you. So, Mr. Speaker, there are two areas that led to the decrease in the estimates of expenditure for the Ministry of Equity. There was a significant project under the World Bank that came to an end by approximately 10 million. The vertical and horizontal expansion of the support under the public assistance. And there was also the transfer of the National Conservation Authority from the Ministry of Equity to the rightly place of the Ministry of Tourism that led to its decrease. But I will show you, Mr. Speaker, If you go to page 647 of the estimates of expenditure, and Mr. Speaker, since this debate is about the estimates on ex of expenditure and revenue, I would want for you to consult your document, which was made available almost eight days earlier. Page 448, you know. Usually at church, when, when, when a pastor is preaching, you usually have your Bible. And then he refer you to verses of scripture and you must get to your Bible. So you have to get to the Bible this morning. The Bible is the estimates of expenditure. 
and you were given that to you, that was given to you eight days ago. So you have no reason after the presentation this morning to, to construct your own arguments. So if you look, Mr. Speaker, for 2024, 2025, you will see salaries and, and, and salary allowances, wages, wages allowances, rewards and incentives, traveling, training, stationary. But you would go down to the area of, you have consultancy services that was reduced. But grants and contribution moved from 16,982,138 to 13 million. Of course, there represents the relocation of the National Conservation Authority from the Ministry of Equity to the Ministry of Tourism. And Mr. Speaker, very important, you would look at the area of um, public assistance, which was 26 million four hundred and eighty-eight thousand and forty-seven dollars to sixteen million eight hundred and seventy-one thousand four hundred and nine dollars. These two areas contribute to the reduction in the estimates of expenditure what was given to the Ministry of Equity is seventeen million four hundred and five hundred and forty five thousand four hundred dollars to the ministry that explains the reduction but mr speaker on page six hundred and forty seven six hundred and forty seven mr speaker you would no, I'm wasting time. I have my time to. Mr. Speaker, you would recognize the amount, and I want to speak to these areas here the areas of capital. Community after school, home care program nine million, St. Lucian Human Capital Resilience five million plus, BNTF four point six million, rehabilitation of human re of the human resource centers nine hundred and fifty thousand, and I will spend some time there, Mr. Speaker. Anticipatory action forecast based financing. 300,000, very important. Offenders Reintegration Pilot Project, 150,000. Multiple Indicator Cluster Survey, the mix, 1.1 million. Under the Family Care Service, you have the counseling, the establishment of a counseling unit, 183,000. The Juvenile Rehabilitation Center, 300,000. And of course, shock responsive social protection project, 292,635,000, nine, and the COVID safety vulnerable response, vulnerable persons response of $2.4 million, a total of $25 million in the capital area, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, each one of those areas represent, and these areas were not funded previously, Mr. Speaker, after school program. Why would the government at this time spend almost $1 million in after school program? Mr. Speaker, a lot of this will be discussed in the policy statement when we come to discuss the policy of government or we have the debate on the policy of this government. But suffice it to say, Mr. Speaker, we understand the nature of education, we understand the inequity of our society, we understand why persons will not always be able to attend school, and you have the incidence of school dropouts. You have the incidence of deviant behaviors in our society. The times are just different, and therefore you have an opportunity for redress in the after school program. Mr. Speaker, the home care program. 
Mr. Speaker, this initiative, this idea coming from the Labour Party of home care program to provide support to persons at their home that started under the NICE program, this is, it has to take a caring, it has to take a government that think beyond the mess scope of the rudiment government activities, the construction of roads, the construction of schools. This government mind would have had to move beyond the normal activities of government to get into somebody's home and recognize there are persons that need assistance and provide it. Mr. Speaker, one would ask, who, who told the Prime Minister that there are senior people? He's not a social worker. But, of course, Member one would understand this. Yes. Member of Castries, South East, you're straying very close to policy statements. Very well, Mr. Speaker. And like I, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And like I said, I will leave all of this. But this is the justification, this is the heart of the government by investing that amount for the elder care program. Mr. Speaker, St. Lucia Human Capital Resilience Program, Mr. Speaker, another very important program, the resilience of our population. Mr. Speaker, the BNTF program, and under this program, Mr. Speaker, I will highlight that we have constructed roads in, <laughs> road in, in Castry South, Woodlands, <coughs> The member didn't want, probably didn't want me to say that, but um, yeah, there's a road in Goodlands, a concrete road in Goodlands. The, the rehabilitation, Mr. Speaker, the rehabilitation of a community center in Badney. Mr. Speaker, I do not want to speak a lot about this, but this one is very important to me for many reasons. Mr. Speaker, I'm tempted to say a little, but based on your guidance, I'll just say it for now. But the, 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 the building is there for many, many years, Mr. Speaker. And in 2016, the former Prime Minister, the member for Viewford South, for Viewford South, he was the then Prime Minister, asked that this building be renovated in 2016, and we placed a new roof on this building. Somehow they thought of Mr. Speaker, it seems that if you do not want something to be done, it's for us to start it. This building is in the heart of the fortress of where I call supporters of the United Workers Party in the constituency of Castro South East. That received nothing, even with a brand new roof on a building. But Mr. Speaker, I'm happy. I'm extremely happy we'll see the completion of this building since 2016. And our deceased brother Fox was the one who established a new roof on the building. And the land will be paid for, Mr. Speaker, under this provision was made to pay the person for the land. Because this building has been on somebody's land, on the plain, plain area has been on somebody's land since forever. And of course, that would be addressed, and I'm happy that is allocated here. Mr. Speaker, when we have disaster, of course, allocation is made. And that, is, and that has been funded under the World Food, World Food Program, anticipatory action. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, when, there's a, when a disaster is approaching, we do not like, after the disaster, to go and provide vulnerable people with support. The Ministry of Equity, through targeting, if we announce that a hurricane is approaching, we want to, before the hurricane approach, to provide support to individuals. And that, Mr. Speaker, and that, Mr. Speaker, we will do under this support right there. Mr. Speaker, the multiple indicator cluster, that will happen. Mr. Speaker, the counseling unit, there will be a counseling unit, and Mr. Speaker, counseling is needed in this country. And a total of $183,609 will be made available for this. 
Mr. Speaker, again, last year we received $349,000 for the Juvenile Center. And I love this one so dearly. A Juvenile Center for St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, an additional $300,000 to continue the work planning, engineering, architectural services, and tomorrow there's a very important meeting and site visit. Mr. Speaker, we cleared the site of the George Child Secondary School. And again, I need to commend the Prime Minister 300% or 500%. Why, Mr. Speaker? Because the current site for the Boys Training Center Ridiculously, we put up, there's burglar bars at the, at the entrance where they are, those who are in conflict with the law, and then they go through the roof, which is easier to escape. So they abscond as, as they want to. And we have a concrete structure, two blocks, three stories, empty, that's five times the size of the current site. Five times the size of the current boys training center. And we did more space up there in Grosley Lake. He says, I'm so happy about this. Because we will transform the George Child Secondary School into a juvenile center. You become the best in the OECS or the Caribbean. That I welcome, Mr. Speaker. And I cannot wait to celebrate the completion of this project. And $300,000 is made available for the continuation design of this juvenile center. It is rehabilitation, but it is a, it is a, is a relocation because some time ago almost $20 million was designed, um, was arranged and a design of a project to place the, the juvenile center at, um, next to Bordelais or somewhere in Boisjoli, Denry. In Denry. I do not see why you would want to use, have a juvenile center next to a prison. Why would, it's almost like automatic graduation you're suggesting. But this government suggesting to put a juvenile center in a secondary, a former secondary school, the emphasis on the psyche of the juvenile center is education. It is training, it is rehabilitation. And this, I will, I'm happy to be associated with this. Mr. Speaker, we have developed, there is an, an amount of 92,000 $645 shock response social protection project. Mr. Speaker, this is so critical. And of course, the area of shock response, you would remember, Mr. Speaker, um, sometime last year there was a, a flood in, 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 in a certain part of uh, north of the island that would have been in, um, in Corinth. And you have a hazard that is localized in a particular area, and in this case, it's a middle class. What this shock response initiative would allow for the multi to apply the multidimensional aspect of poverty. A very interesting proxy test that doesn't only look at poverty in terms of income poverty, but look at certain deprivation so you could find out who is most, who you should prioritize when you have a disaster. So you would run through your normal country poverty survey, those who are below the poverty line. But of course, if there's a, sh a disaster in your country tomorrow, how do you prioritize? And therefore, the shock response allow for for the assessment of persons who are most in need at the time of the crisis. Mr. Speaker, this $25,241,000 under the capital program of the Ministry of Equity will go a long way in assisting the vulnerable population of this country. Mr. Speaker, this is the heart and soul of this government. Mr. Speaker, this is the heart and soul of why we put people first. This is the heart and soul of why I refer to this budget as a caring, productive, and responsible budget. 
Mr. Speaker, the sincerity of the Prime Minister's presentation has led me to reflect on how does that impact Castri Southeast. How such a, bu a budget can cause the transformation that we speak of in the Ministry of Equity. How does that happen? Mr. Speaker, even before I highlight this, if you highlight the, under the grants and contribution of the, minis of the Ministry of Equity, you would see something very interesting on page 604 of the estimates of expenditure. And Mr. Speaker, you would notice that on the 23-24, on the grants and contribution, the Ministry of Equity received $14,938,338. And this time around, we received $12,118,388. And of course, like I said previously, the $1.9 million for the National Conservation Authority is no longer there because it has been re relocated. But Mr. Speaker, there is an agency that is now under the grants and contribution of the Ministry of Equity and Social Justice. It is referred to Advocate Linking Resilience Movement, ALAM. They received just a meager $6,240,000. Mr. Speaker, I believe this is the most in impactful, significant contribution to me in this budget while the amount is meager. I'll explain to you why, Mr. Mr. Speaker. This organization, what's that? Yes, $600,000, $240,000. Six thousand, sorry, two hundred and forty. But it's important, Mr. Speaker, and I'll give more details in the policy debate. But, Mr. Speaker, the alarm <laughs> cannot help myself, <laughs> and I'll repeat it. In, uh, you know, members are telling me, um, yeah, the estimates debate is more about the figures. But I cannot resist, Mr. Speaker, and, and bear me, Mr. Speaker, on this, Mr. Speaker. This organization, you would want to know why are they there? Who is this organization referred to? Advocate Lincoln Resilience Movement. Who are they? And why are they receiving a grant? And I'm sure persons would want to know. Mr. Speaker, when you, based on what I've encountered in this, on this island, what I've encountered during my work for the past 20 years, 15 years working at the St. Lucia Social Development Fund as, you know, dealing with poverty reduction and the ills of our society, and the past few years in opposition. Mr. Speaker, when you have a 25-year-old approaching you with a disabled child, autistic, she's trying to figure out how she wants to move on with her life but the child is ripping, ripping off her hair and she has nowhere to place the child. But she must have the child because the child has no place to have a, such a disabled child. Alarm is responding to that. Single parents with children who are extremely disabled can finally find a place to place the child and go to town and look for a job. Mr. Speaker, the rest I will leave it because there are more gruesome examples of why we need that support. Mr. Speaker, on the grants and contribution, Rice St. Lucia Inc. would be receiving a grant. And the sisters of Kolkata, <laughs> the member for Castri South. <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> Yes, would be receiving a grant because they are providing needed charitable philanthropic support. Mr. Speaker, also, Mr. Speaker, they, they, when you have an increase to feed the poor ministry, 
an increase to St. Lucie's home, an increase in Adelaide's home. The figures have now moved from 13 mid has, has been reduced because of course, like I said, National Conservation Authority has moved. But we have seen an increase in the grants and contribution under the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and Empowerment. Mr. Speaker, and the question is, how, how has this affect life? How would the Castri South East constituency benefit from such interventions? Mr. Speaker, I first want to reflect on the allocation made on the local government. Mr. Speaker, the local government, the Castri South East Council, is very important to Castri South East. And Mr. Mr. Speaker, just as the city of Castries, the, the city council is to the city of Castries, I believe so must all councils relate to the constituency. And while it takes time, I believe we must start now. I do not think in Castries South East we need constituency police. Although in maybe in the distant future, if it becomes necessary, so it must be. But if we are to develop this country in the way that we want to, our councils must be strengthened. Our councils must respond. Mr. Speaker, what has happened on the my stewardship? And I'm proud to report, Mr. Speaker, do I have humble about anything that I do, that the Castries South East Council, under the Act established in 2012, Mr. Speaker, when I asked someone in Castries South East, what is it that a staff of 12 persons in the constituency have to be a council in Castries South East, the second largest constituency, I was told there were one barrow, one weed eater, and a few hand tools. Mr. Speaker, my first action was that transportation is a constituency business, and I did not want transportation to be politicized. And therefore, I provide a coaster. The, the, the time when his ambassador and prime minister allowed a coaster for Castry South East. I continue to increase the asset base of, Castry, of the council in Castry South East. Mr. Speaker, not, all, not only that Castries South East Council had a coster, but Castries South East now sits on the Solid Waste Management Board because they grow the, the waste, the, 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 the field where they dump in garbage is in the constituency. Thank you. Thank you, the Minister of Education and the member for, for Denry, Denry North. But that was allowed. So Castries South East, Constituency Council is now sits on Solid Waste Management Board. And you don't understand why, Mr. Speaker. Detail of it, every vehicle that going to dump garbage is into Castries South is Deglo. And when the process of covering the garbage is not done well, we are greeted by the house flies in the homes of Deglo, Beckson, Odson. And I'm not happy about it, I will tell you, because I visit my constituents and I see what happens? Mr. Speaker, there will be a new cemetery, national cemetery. And the new national cemetery will be in Bexon. Because, God forbid, or unfortunately, we continue to die. Those of us who don't to accept it and shock. It's loaded. I don't want to take away your constituent. You will have your dead. <laughs> if they are. But Bexon has been identified, has been earmarked. 14 acres, acres of land has been, has been acquired. So the new, not the new shock, the new Bexon. 
burial ground will become the national place. So like I said to the member for city council is assisting us, but Castries City will not come to Bexar to bury dead. We shall bury our dead in Bexar. And therefore, the city council is now represented on a committee to ensure the business of burial takes place. And if there's any benefit to it, it shall reside in the constituency of Castle Southeast. Making bread on the dead, we didn't start it. Mr. Spe Mr. Speaker, that council is now represented on a committee that's responsible for jazz in Dexo. Only that we are, not only that we are doing, we bury them. Yes, jazz in Bexo. And of course, next year we're going for the main stage event. <laughs> Tell you. No, no. <laughs> we will not stand by and just be a spectator. The Castries South East constituency, and like I've said, in Wavin Poisson, in Forest Chair, is endowed with able men that can form any cabinet. We good. Huh? You could include who you want. But even that will be subjected to elections. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying that we are able in Castries South, so I do not want Castries South to be looked upon as if it were. You know, when you talk about St. Lucia, you leave Castries and you skip Castries office and you start heading to Denry. No! We in it! Yeah, you head to Denry North, Denry South. No, we in it! And we must be counted. So, yes, jazz in Castries office. This is inspirational. Hills and Valleys jazz. It's here to stay. And we've just put us one foot in. But I'm telling you, we're going for Pigeon Point because we can't host the main event. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Trust me, we can turn our rivers into a lot more. Mr. Speaker, but there's something that's happening in Castry Southeast. And very soon you will see the opening of a bus shelter. A bus shelter at the corner of Bele and Sarat. It will be the first bus shelter in St. Lucia that have washrooms. It is the first bus shelter in St. Lucia with hairdressing salon. It is the first bus shelter that will create employment. It is the first bus shelter that have an attendant because visitors pass by. And Mr. Speaker, there is some artwork taking place on that bus shelter. When we, uh, <laughs> well, we need to be creative. We need to, and this bus shelter will be handed over to the council, Mr. Speaker, because the council will be the one collecting rent for the operations of two head, two barbers, and a hairdresser. And you have the washrooms at the bottom and the bus shelter on the side. Take a look at it, Mr. Speaker. This is innovation because Castries South is, we got it. Got it. We have it. We have it locked down. Perfect. You understand? Mr. Speaker, absolutely innovative comfort station. And we're not doing it just for Castries South. East. We are saying to the rest of the constituents, our ladies should not have to run to the bush or go to behind the vehicle when they want to go around the islands and enjoy, you know, the weekend is coming. St. Lucians want to go on an island tour. It's, uh, why is it that they haven't got washrooms at strategic points that people should stop and use washrooms? Why is it only visitors we con we, we consider in? I personally have a problem with that. So I am not arguing with everybody else. I am putting it in Castries surface. Very soon, when you pass through Castries office, if you want a stop, you'll get a stop and relax, enjoy yourself, get a restroom before you move out of Castries office because that's where it will be. Putting one at the corner of Bexo, one by Mac, one by Therefore, 
I believe we need to provide for our people, and we're doing that. But I'm leaving all of this for policy this debate, Mr. Speaker. I'm leaving that. I'll repeat it. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this year, cash resources we receive <laughs> a truck and a pickup. Yeah, not a constituency of wheelbarrows. Cash resource council, and I'm just talking about expenditure. We will receive a truck and a wheelbarrow. <laughs> because we have to keep our constituency clean. But Mr. Speaker, let me move on from the council. Because when you talk about CPR, when you talk about caring, productive, when you're talking about, you know, responsibility, it's an imagination that persons who want to grow and develop the people develop the place that these are the characteristics you want to look for and that is why this budget as best as i can describe it is a P cpr budget caring productive and responsible stop this boring thing mr speaker let's move into how this ministry how the budget will impact infrastructure and cash resources mr speaker the ongoing works West Coast redevelopment. Mr. Speaker, very early, and of course I've learned from all the parliamentarians I've served, and I'm maybe one of the few parliamentarians in here who have served as the executive director to two of those parliamentarians who sit here, a blue wave and a member for Viewfort South. Blue wave is not a parliamentary term, Mr. Speaker. So I remember, I prefer saying the member for, for Castries North and the member for Viewfort South. I was the executive director of the St. Lucia Social Development Fund and I was able to serve both prime ministers. Mr. Speaker, and I learned from the two as I've had the opportunity to interact with them directly. Not on any political issue, but more on developmental people focus because that's what I was responsible for. Mr. Speaker, you seize the opportunity when something is happening to see how you can affect or bring the best out of it. Design of projects, infrastructure projects, is not left for an engineer, but the community, the parliamentarian, must all participate to bring out the best out of the design. So upon winning the election, at the appointed time, July, I rushed to the office where there was a consultant and I said, let me see the design of the West Coast Road. I said, you're not going to complete it without providing sidewalks for the children leaving the Marigold Primary School into their community. That is critical. Mr. Speaker, there was a design to rehabilitate West Coast Road. Mr. Speaker, you'd, if you have to travel from Lacroix to Soufre, you know, you have to snake yourself through to Soufre. And the drains are deep because you are going down and climbing. Can you imagine leaving school and you're heading home? You are the mercy of vehicles speeding in one direction, there are no speed bumps, and on your sides are deep drains, almost the height of a child. I said that this project must include sidewalks, or must be pedestrian friendly, because there's a school on it, and that is being accommodated. Mr. Speaker, also, I had the opportunity to highlight, and, uh, Mr. Speaker, development in St. Lucia is an interesting one. And Mr. Keep me on time, Mr. Speaker. I do not want to take more than 45 minutes. I'm almost there. I'm 45 minutes. Ah, 15 minutes, Mr. Speaker. I, all, I was just testing your curiosity on time, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I wanted the opportunity to correct a problem in Kalisa. Mr. Speaker, you could observe the land grab that's taking place in the Caldesac Valley. And thanks to the new, to our senior minister, he have had to arrest that land grab that's taking place in the Caldesac Valley. Right, senior minister? 
Previously, everybody wanted peace of Kaldisa, hot grounds. Mr. Speaker, if you see the plethora of memos to cabinet who were taking a peace. So Massey have a peace, Kentucky have a peace, CPG have a peace, and other persons, <laughs> except the people, except the people. I said to the developer of who is doing the road work, you will solve the problem in Kalisakov one, sewage flooding. Mr. Speaker, there is a communal sewage system that's there since we were in the colonial days, one septic tank. And at the bottom there, Mr. Speaker, there are lots. And one of the most mischievous things of colonization, or after after, the church provided people, or geese provided people with 2,000 square foot of lot. And those persons who know the average lot today is 4,000 or 5,000. Can you imagine you have 2,000 square foot of lot of land for yourself? In Kalisa, going to some communities, 2,000 square foot. And there's a communal system where everybody's sewage converge. But it doesn't work, so it backs up. And when it rains, the entire place floods. I said to the, to the roadworks, roadwork, to the, the contractor doing the works on this West Coast, do not complete it without solving your drainage problem and the sewage problem. Thank God the Prime Minister, CPR, provided $80,000 to Wasco to solve the sewage problem, Mr. Speaker. And Namalco will deal with the drainage problem. And not only that will happen, we've made funds available to deal with revitalization of the community center, a community center that is used more than any other community center, the one that is $10 million in the Bexar River. <coughs> you understand, Mr. Speaker? So yes, that will happen. Infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, I'm hoping to see spit bombs and sidewalks in the community of Bexar. Mr. Speaker, just within my two and a half years as parliamentarians, as parliamentarian, I have seen accidents that have claimed more than four lives. More than four lives over two and a half years. I cannot count what it was before. We cannot allow Bexo to continue that way. If the professionals want to go down to Bexo and prevent accidents to take lives, I am fine with it. Until professionals and police go down to Bexo, slow down the traffic. Some technocrats say you must not put speed bumps. But I would love that. Under my watch, Mr. Speaker, two and a half years, four deaths through accident. And one must check the statistics to see whether, we, whether this is happening more frequently than other forms of, of, of losing lives. So I would love to see this addressed. Mr. Speaker, Twapiton Odson. We must, Mr. Speaker, and of course I'm happy that Monbele, Kulitong bypass, the senior minister said he would look at it. The Lakwa Otsa completion of the Tet Mac Road, Mr. Speaker, and the Flosak Road. Mr. Speaker, one of the vexing things for me is to see that you start a project on the one that means we will finish, and I would love to see this thing finished. Ministry of Health, Mr. Speaker, I would like to see the relocation of the Lakwa Health Center. The Lakwa Health Center certainly is in Kastri South because the road is the boundary. But, yes, it's there. It's there. And I'm happy that we are considering this, Mr. Speaker. You cannot have a health center in that, in that location. Lakwa health, health Center is not accessible. And if you have a wheelchair, you cannot use it at all. It's in Castry South, but the people who use it, is, they are from Castry Southeast. <laughs> So I'm not concerned where the project is, I'm concerned about who using it. Once my constituents using it, fix it. It can be in Matnik. I will. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sports. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy that in a little whisper yesterday, the Minister of Sports said, I will get a multi-purpose court. And I say, hooray, I almost wanted to celebrate. Twapiton, Kuliton will receive multi-purpose courts. Community centers, Mr. Speaker. Member, you have 10 minutes left. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. That is more than enough time. Mr. Speaker, we will see the restoration of the Badney Community 
Center, and of course, Mr. Speaker, we will purchase the land. And I know the people of Bel Air, not Bel Air, Mr. Speaker, Badney, will be extremely happy for this. Mr. Speaker, the, dis the decision to have small community centers must be part of a policy discussion. And I will have a conversation on this, and I will elucidate on it when we have the policy statement, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Tetmark Road, we are happy that we will get money to finish it. Therefore, recreational facility. Mr. Speaker, if we are not able to have a facility there, we will seek to acquire the land. We will identify and acquire the land. Some lands have been identified to have a facility in there for. Mr. Speaker, agriculture. Not fertilizer. The corporate is for the Sandy Fair farmers. We must realize it. The Sandy Fair farmers are very prog progressive. And of course, if there's one group that we must invest in, is the farmers in, in Sandy Fair. Mr. Speaker, like I said, we have capacity in Castries office. We just need to listen and work with these individuals. They are capable of holding positions in cabinet too. They're just not politicians. But when you have you know Herbert Emanuel, a former permanent secretary. You have Bernie Melrose, a former CAPSEC who is a farmer. You have Eustace Monrose. You have so many able persons in the constituency. When they sit down to plan, it's almost like a little cabinet. <laughs> they're not Adventists. They are farmers. <laughs> they are farmers. You understand? But I'm saying that we have capacity in the constituency, and I would love to see the cooperative of the San Bife farmers. Mr. Speaker, education in the constituency. Mr. Speaker, the Wavin Poisson Early Childhood Center will receive a comprehensive renovation. I hear what you say, Sean. <laughs> By the side. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, move on, okay. <laughs> yes, and Bella will receive a brand new Early Childhood Center. Mr. Speaker, Sadly, the Sarat Early Childhood Center has closed its doors. And the new Early Childhood Center to be established in Bel Air will respond to the demand for Early Childhood Center in the in Castries office and that part of our society. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, very importantly, Mr. Speaker, the Bexor Primary School will be assessed for site suitability and structural integrity. Mr. Speaker, we are very unhappy. I am not happy with the look of the Bexor Primary School. And I am not only the one saying that. The minister, the minister said to me, we will look at it. But again, the Prime Minister, through his CPR budget, caring, productive, and responsible, has asked that we look at this and assess it for its site suitability and structural integrity. So we plan to do something about it. Mr. Speaker, I do not want to speak about social assistance for the island. But the Prime Minister, you know, Mr. Speaker, like I said, I've worked with two, I've served with two different Prime Ministers who are here. But as a minister, I've worked with Prime Minister Philo Joseph, Philip Joseph Pierre. On the stimulus, Mr. Speaker, do you know this year, we impacted over 16,000 persons. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the most, the numbers I knew of when we were doing numbers and we were big, beating our chest were about 2005. Possession, but this year, this Prime Minister on the stimulus, 16,000, over 16,000 persons benefited. This is significant. This is, this is more than the population that are indigent, indigent. I do not know what the response will be from the opposition. But can you imagine in a year you had stimulus where you, you you reached 16,000 persons. Remember, you have five minutes left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm going well. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, social assistance. Mr. Speaker, 
in my constituency, I could characterize what I do not by concrete and steel. Social assistance, Mr. Speaker, housing assistance, house lots, medical assistance, educational assistance, food support, small business, electrical and water connections, sporting groups and other charity sponsorship, fifth base support. That has characterized what has done in Castries Southeast more than anything else. Mr. Speaker, housing assistance is critical for the well-being of any community and especially a household. Mr. Speaker, many a times when children are missing from their homes and you could see on social media that a child is missing, it's associated with housing condition. Housing condition. When a young child, especially young lady, is in form two, and the housing condition is not well. And some young man who has no good intention whisper into her, hair, into her ears. Sometimes that leads out of the house. So when a mother comes to me and asks me to extend a room for her daughter, Mr. Speaker, I know what it is. I know what I'm responding to. So Mr. Speaker, over 300 persons in cash service have received housing assistance. Over 300. Yes, sir. Medical assistance to include eye care and dental care, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, medical assistance, I include eye care and dental care. Over 150 persons in Castries office have, re have received medical assistance under my care and responsibility of the constituency, Mr. Speaker. And I do not find out who they are. UWPSLP, which P you are, once you are St. Lucian and you are suffering and there's a deprivation and you need this, and I have the means, I will support. Mr. Speaker, there's a gentleman who said to me, for water connection, he has been going previously for three years. And he was asking, why didn't he get water connection? I said, but why didn't you get it? He's just signed, I have to sign the letter. He said, well, he said, he's not supported. But I said, I don't understand why I should even sign a letter for you to get water and, get water and light. Because as far as I read the Bible, <laughs> when God created the earth, he said, let there be light. So who give the politicians the right to sign letters? I said, I'm not wasting time. Anybody who comes to, to me and you're from Castries office and you're on Cronlands, you can be red, yellow, black or white. I just sign in the letter. Get light. Because God did not use politics to give it. I'm not using it. Mr. Speaker, small business support. Mr. Speaker, there are persons who just need $500 to pursue the bank to organize a loan. Of course, the small loans are available, but just $500. The prime ministers made funds available. I support them. Don't ask for food support. And Mr. Speaker, while I speak, I'm preparing 300 humpers today to distribute tomorrow. Not hope. I don't know. Huh? Because Castry Southeast, Mr. Speaker, you need to take a site with a visit with me, Mr. Speaker. And I will tell you, you will meet the constituents of Castry Southeast. We have our own struggles. We are in the middle of the south of the island and the north where things are different, Mr. Speaker. And we do this, Mr. Speaker, for the betterment and to ensure. Mr. Speaker, I'd rather somebody fool me and get a bag of food than I didn't give them and they need it. And therefore, I take chances and make them. That's my approach. That's me. But you cannot fool me. My head is big, but my heart is bigger. Mr. Speaker, crisis responses. Mr. Speaker, there are times a lady needs to leave her home to run away from domestic violence. And because she needs to leave, she needs transportation money. She needs to move. Member, in the absence of the invocation of 32.8, I must ask you to take your seat.